shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to the Pony Bash. Okay, it's time for episode 5 of the Pony Bash, and before I get into the main event, I want to touch very briefly on the landing gear. So this is one of the Edward main gear struts, and these things are tiny and rather well detailed. They also have two interesting features kind of at the at both ends. So on the axle side down here, this wheel mount is substantially different from most wheel mounts on most landing gear, which is just kind of like a rod of styrene sticking out that you put the wheel on. This is more of like a drum. And it mounts to the corresponding shallow wide hole in the resin wheel or the plastic wheel just like so and I would also note that the gear struts are actually they're either too small or the resin wheels are too big and they come very 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 close to interfering with each other this has actually already been filed back to create more space but it is so close that it's almost touching uh, when you just kind of pull them out of the box so that is frustrating it's also frustrating on these resin ones that there is a very, very slight looseness to this mount. It's not, it's not a press fit in any way, shape, or form. And if you actually put it on here and let go, it will fall right off. So I'm thinking of ways to improve this a little bit. I haven't really landed on what I want to do yet. One option is filling this hole with CA and then drilling it very slightly narrower. I'm not sure yet, though. But basically, because of what's going on on the other end, this extra little bit of slop in here, where it can do this, and can tow in and out a little bit, introduces variables that I'm not happy with. Because up here, that is the mount to install this into the gear bay. That little fucking triangle. And then apparently this little nub in here also plays a role, but, uh, dear god. I, I am not <laughs> I'm not a particularly big fan of that mount and that design. It just seems like you're asking what can go wrong with it. Now I may get to the point where I install this and everything is hunky dory and I can come back and say, you know what, this wasn't so bad, but I prefer sort of a beefier, no alignment mistakes possible mount, and that doesn't seem, at least at first blush, what this is. Okay, last thing on the landing gear are the open spoke wheels on the non gear side of the tires. Basically these fit in here like this. And when you first pull them out of the little Edward bag, they have basically resin flash blocking up every single one of these holes. And it's really annoying. And at first you think, Oh fuck, I'm going to have to get in here with like a little blade and clean them out of every single fucking hole. And ain't nobody got time for that. So, I was looking at these and thinking, okay, what can I do? And looked at the back, and when you look at the back, you see that the resin flash actually sits proud of the wheels a little bit. And so what I did is I came in here with my blade and basically just put it up against one side of a spoke like this and just pushed it through. And what that did on the other side here was it lifted that little bit of resin flash up on that side. And then I was able to come in with a blade and basically kind of work in my way like this, just sort of get in here and slice it off and do a little bit of cleanup on the end, and everything came out fine. It looks a little bit gnarly from the inside, but from the outside here, you know, everything looks pretty damn great. So that's a quick, easy way to deal with that flash. Instead of trying to get in here from the front, just tackle it from the back. Okay, now it's time for the main event, which is the Mustang itself, which has just come out of main paint. So basically at this point, it has the silver lacquered wings, the bare metal fuselage, the yellow nose, and the olive drab anti-glare panel all painted up and ready to go. And since you can't see much of it from the top, here you go, a good view from the side with the bare metal finish. Everything is looking nice and shiny and mustangy. The underside is looking pretty good. Uh, this cleanup didn't go quite as smooth as I'd hoped, but again, this is going to be under invasion stripes. So any weird finish stuff literally doesn't matter at all. Now, what all did I use for painting this? Well, it's a mix of things. So the wings themselves are Tamiya LP-11, thinned with Mr. Rapid Thinner. And I was worried they'd be a bit dull and boring. 
but when you have them side by side here with the bare metal, I think they actually work really, really well. And obviously we're going to get more character as the greened out invasion stripes go on the top and the regular invasion stripes go on the bottom and all that. On the fuselage itself, this was painted with Guns GX2 to get a nice glossy black base. And then it was shot with K-Colors 15 aluminum, K-Colors 60 steel, and the stainless steel bit right here around the exhaust fairings was painted with chrome 63 dark. So a couple different metalizers in there. Um, and if you're one of the people who thinks that clear coats to protect metalizers ruin the finish, this has already been hit with K-Colors X100. So it has been cleared. It is now maskable and all that stuff. And I don't think it diminished it, but maybe like two or three percent. You know, it's still a nice, shiny, lovely thing to behold. The nose up here was done with MRP 142 orange yellow. And the anti glare panel was done with, let's see, it was a mix of NATO black, US Hilo drab as sort of a, a base dark color, and then olive drab. ANA 613, which is MRP 138, this lovely guy, mixed with a bit of NATO black to darken it up, and a bit of chestnut brown to take some of the green out of it. So, overall, coming along quite well. The flaps, ailerons, elevators, all that stuff are also painted up. They're just not on here because they make it tough to actually handle the beast. So, we're getting there. Next up is markings, and markings are going to be interesting. Uh, for basically spacing reasons, <laughs> for nothing else. Uh, that, and I hope that my silhouette can actually cut the nose script and the tail number and all that. But basically, with invasion stripes, they were 18 inches wide, right? Each stripe, which is about 9.5 millimeters. Easy enough to cut tape for that. They also started on the wings six inches in from the insignia. So basically, I need to map out where the insignia goes over here. Six inches in from there, which I think is like four and a half millimeters, something like that. So basically mark that off, then mark off the invasion stripes so I can paint them and all that stuff. Same thing on this wing and on the underside, make sure that everything's all lined up. On the fuselage, the invasion stripes are supposed to start 18 inches in front of the leading edge of the stabilizers, which is nine and a half millimeters just like the invasion stripe width so that puts it somewhere up probably around this brake line up through here and so i need to map that out as well i also need to work on the insignias and i need to work on my process for how i want to paint this because on this one it has basically a split right in the middle here where you have pure invasion stripes on the bottom so the white and black the ones above the insignia have all been painted over green or olive drab and that needs to be reflected as well. Then you have the insignia in the middle. Then you have the fuselage codes right up here and back here. Fortunately, there is no stupid bare metal outline of the insignia on this one. It's basically insignia, invasion stripes all around it. There are, however, some very small outlines around the fuselage codes, particularly up front. I, there might be one in the back too. Um, and so I need to figure out how I want to tackle that from a masking and order of painting perspective. But for the most part, we're pretty much ready to move into markings. And I just honestly need to, need to uh, sit my ass down at the computer and play with Illustrator for a bit to get them where I want them before I cut them. So all is well. Stay tuned for more. And the Pony Bash continues. <laughs> 